the more you think about it, the less reasons you'll find to buy the Volkswagen Tiguan facelift. A. It feels expensive, especially as compared to the full-sized SUVs like the Toyota Fortuner or the MG Gloucester. B. On paper at least, it doesn't really have many headline features. So, why should you buy the Volkswagen Tiguan? Well, as it turns out, there are actually quite a few reasons why you should. The Tiguan doesn't have the size advantage, but what it has is pleasing looks. And after the tweaks Volkswagen has made to the facelift, it actually looks little desirable as well. Up front, you get a brand new bumper which looks more aggressive and in your face, you also get smarter looking new LED headlamps. And in my experience from last night, they also work quite well. Then coming to the new grille, which might not be to everyone's liking because of the loads of chrome on it. But at least the chrome finish feels premium. In profile, not much has changed. It looks almost exactly the same, yet modern. What has changed is that you get new 18-inch alloy wheels. But in profile, there's one element which does add to the wow factor. Okay, I'm not talking about the optional roof rack or the side steps which aren't really useful, especially because this is not a tall car. What I'm talking about are the hubcaps. They are self-centering just like on a Rolls Royce. At the rear, changes are minimal. All you get is a new bumper and smarter looking LED tail lamps. If you buy the TIG one, what you'll love is the sense of solidity. Just listen to this door shut. It feels properly German, doesn't it? Not only that, even when it comes to quality, it is almost flawless. On the dash top, you get soft touch materials. Even on the door pads, you get soft touch materials. And everywhere you touch, it feels properly premium. In fact, if you replace this VW logo with other German premium brands, this cabin might just fit in their cars really well. Now, the Tiguan feels like good value, doesn't it? The Tiguan might not have many headline features, but whatever features it gets, are really well executed. For example, with the facelift, you get all digital instrumentation, you get loads of information right under your nose, and you can also change the layout of the screen according to your liking, and the screen itself is high res. Now coming to the infotainment system. Sure, it's not the biggest of systems around at eight inches, but the way this system functions is almost flawless. For example, the touch response is really snappy and you also get these big icons which make them easy to use when you're driving. And you also get some wow elements with this display. For example, you get gesture control. Cool, right? With the screen, you also get a proximity sensor. So whenever you take your hand closer to the screen, the icons pop up so that you can find the functions easily. So the biggest change on the Tiguan is the new engine. Where the old car came with a 2.0-litre turbo diesel, the new one is also a 2.0-litre. But TDI is replaced with TSI. Turbo petrol, 50 PS more power. It should be more fun, right? It is. It also sounds so good on the inside. And it's not only the outright power which impresses you, but it's also the effortlessness of this engine and the 7-speed transmission which makes driving this car such a pleasure. Even at low speeds, this engine responds really well and even the 7-speed dual clutch transmission feels jerk-free, unlike in some dual clutch transmissions. Even out on the highway, thanks to this 190 PS engine, this car feels at home. You can do three digit speeds for hours. Not only that, this engine also feels refined. There's hardly any wind or tire noise that seeps into the cabin. Even on a narrow two lane road, if you want to execute a quick overtake, all you have to do is flex your right foot slightly and it'll get it done very easily. You can enjoy the Tiguan not only from the front seat, also if you're chauffeur driven. For example, in the rear seat, you get more than enough knee room, just about enough headroom. You can also recline the comfortable seats backrest. And to give you a feeling of a boss, you can just fold this front seat flat, 
sit back and relax. It's not only the space and seating comfort that impresses you in the Tiguan, it's also the ride quality which is superb out on the highway where over any surfaces it just glides over them. Yes, at low speeds you do feel some firmness where you can hear the suspension working but it's more of that you hear it working than you feel it inside the car. The Tiguan not only has effortless performance and rides comfortably over our roads but also handles beautifully around corners and this is where this car has a distinct advantage as compared to its full-size SUV rivals thanks to the monocoque chassis. Now normally in a standalone review I'll talk about the Tiguan feeling very nice around corners and feeling car-like but I won't really be able to quantify it but this time around we can because this is the same corner where we back-to-back -back tested the Gloucester, Endeavour and Fortuner. Those cars at 50 km per hour felt comfortable, at 60 they struggled and anything beyond that they fell apart. So how much better will the Tiguan perform? Let's find out. At 60 km per hour the Tiguan felt comfortable as it took the corner with utmost ease with body roll well in check. At 70, even where many low-slung sporty cars would struggle, the Tiguan remained almost unfazed. Sure, the tyres were running out of grip, but even at the limit, the way this car behaved is commendable. It not only goes fast around corners, but also feels comfortable while doing so. These were the reasons to buy the Tiguan. Now, here are some why you might just want to avoid one. At almost 40 lakh on road, you can get other SUVs which are much larger. And although the Tiguan looks pleasing to the eye, it doesn't really stand up and shout, Hey, look at me, look at me, I'm a big expensive SUV. Now, this turbo petrol engine gives you effortless performance, especially as compared to the old TDI. But in terms of fuel efficiency, it does take a big hit. For example, when we were driving it calmly out on the highway, it was just about going into double digits. And if you drive it even a little bit faster, it goes into single digits. And with the ever-rising fuel prices, it might be a deal breaker for some people. At this price point, you do miss out on some feel-good features. For example, you do get heated front seats and steering wheel, which is ideal for some parts of India. But for the rest of them, ideally, they should have given cool seats. Not only that, you also miss out on a wireless charging pad, you don't get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, rear sun blinds, and you do also miss out on ADAS features, which is starting to become a norm even in cars almost half this car's price. Overall, the Tiguan is an extremely likeable car. It drives beautifully, it feels like it is made with utmost care and precision and it looks classy too. Sure, for some people it might come across as too expensive considering the size and features list. But for me, it's perfect. I make my decision from the heart while buying a car. I love driving, I love the feel of quality. I also like simplicity in my cars and for me this car is perfect. I just wish I had the money to buy one though.